It has long been theorized by many different respected scientists that we might actually live inside of a simulation. In his address at Tuesday's GPU Technology Conference, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang bragged of several game-changing advancements, but he opted to end on a promise that the next supercomputer NVIDIA is helping to build, will be the Cambridge 2 and is set to be one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world by the time it is released. That alone sounds pretty incredible, but its supposed abilities and main function is something straight out of science fiction. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the revolutionary and almost unbelievable plans of NVIDIA and the United Kingdom's government, when we could realistically expect for it to actually come about, and finally, what this could mean for the future of computing and even society itself. NVIDIA announced on Tuesday that they will create a digital twin of the Earth in hopes of combating things like natural disasters or to partially simulate our future. NVIDIA is describing it as a tool for knowing how to prevent the consequences of climate change. This new supercomputer will be E2, Earth 2, Earth's digital duplicate, running modulus created AI physics at a million times the omniverse speed. All of the technologies they've developed up to this point are required to make E2 a reality. I can't think of any bigger or more significant news. Consider NVIDIA's objective for 2021 a stretch goal that eventually feeds into NVIDIA's vision to become a full-stack computing firm, not simply scientific computing. Despite spending a lot of time promoting the omniverse, NVIDIA's notion for network 3D environments, Huang wanted to emphasize that it's not only a digital playground, but also a place to model changes in the real world. Omniverse is not the same as a game engine. Omniverse is designed to be data center size and, ideally, planetary scale in the future. Earth 2 is intended to be the next step beyond Cambridge 1, a $100 million supercomputer released by NVIDIA in June and made available to healthcare researchers in the United Kingdom. NVIDIA pursued this work in collaboration with drug development and university academics, with GSK and AstraZeneca participating. Huang stated at a press conference that the new supercomputer would be sponsored entirely by NVIDIA and will be particularly developed for simulations in the omniverse environment. He made no mention of partnerships with other corporations or research organizations. The location and architecture of the system will be revealed at a later date. A supercomputer is, by definition, many times more powerful than general-purpose computers used for everyday commercial operations. That means the definition of a supercomputer is evolving as performance creeps into general-purpose computing to the point where an iPhone today is said to be more powerful than the IBM supercomputer that defeated chess master Garry Kasparov in 1997 and far more powerful than the supercomputers used to guide the Apollo missions in the 1970s. Supercomputers bring up images of the big, lumbering, sweltering machines that were the world's first introduction to computing, the ones that took up vast amounts of space while spitting out computation after computation. You might be shocked to learn that, Despite the pervasiveness of personal computers and network systems, supercomputers are still employed in a variety of processes. We'll explain what supercomputers are and how they still work in a variety of industrial and scientific fields. Designers began utilizing numerous processor types inside their designs, which resulted in a breakthrough in supercomputing. Milky Way 2, for example, became the fastest supercomputer of its time in 2014 by utilizing both Intel Xeon Ivy Bridge and Xeon Phi processors. The Xeon Phi is a high-performance graphics processing unit GPU. These graphics processors are particularly good at doing floating-point calculations. This novel method of merging two types of commercially available processors is becoming more widespread. The great majority of the fastest of the fast on the November 2020 Top 500 supercomputer ranking employ floating-point GPUs such as the Xeon Phi, NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs, and PESI SCX accelerators. Accelerator chips are now used in 149 of the Top 500 systems. The National Nuclear Security Administration and Purdue University started utilizing a network of supercomputers to simulate nuclear weapons capabilities in 2012. The testing is carried out on a staggering 100,000 computers. However, supercomputers are no longer limited to the military. 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uses a supercomputer called the Weather and Climate Operational Supercomputing System to forecast weather, anticipate weather events, and track space and oceanic weather activities whenever you check the weather app on your phone. However, supercomputers are more than simply gloomy, smart machines. Some of them are literally utilized for fun and games. Consider the enormously popular online game World of Warcraft. When a million people are playing World of Warcraft at the same time, visuals and performance are critical. Enter the supercomputers, which are employed to do the unending computations that allow the game to go worldwide. But supercomputers aren't just gloomy, intellectual machines. Some of them are used for fun and games, literally. Consider World of Warcraft, a massively popular online game. If a million people are playing World of Warcraft at the same time, visuals and performance are critical. Enter the supercomputers, which perform the unending computations that allow the game to go worldwide. Many of the advancements disclosed by NVIDIA are geared at making extremely high-performance computing more widely available, for example, by allowing businesses to use it as a cloud service and use it for things like zero-trust computing. Today's supercomputers are often composed of enormous arrays of servers running Linux that are linked together via extremely fast interconnects. As supercomputing facilities continue to open their doors to more academics, and cloud computing companies begin to provide supercomputing services, Huang believes NVIDIA's Quantum 2 platform, which is already accessible, represents a significant shift in supercomputer architecture. Climate modeling is far more difficult than weather simulation, which only simulates atmospheric physics, and the model's correctness can be confirmed every few days. Long-term climate forecasting must account for the physics of the Earth's atmosphere, seas and waterways, ice, land, and human activities, as well as their interactions. Furthermore, modeling resolutions ranging from 1 to 10 meters are required to account for factors such as low air clouds that reflect the sun's light back into space. As much as we anticipate the technological revolution occurring on personal computers, cell phones, and tablets, the fact is that supercomputers will demonstrate how far technology has progressed. The fast improving processors that power supercomputers are what slowly trickle down into the market, but not before they have an influence on vast swaths of our life, including military defense, weather, scientific and health research, and even gaming. To see how much our lives rely on developing technology, consider how quickly one supercomputer's supremacy is supplanted by another faster, more powerful one. Developing mitigation and adaptation methods is perhaps one of the most significant issues confronting civilization today, Huang added. The mix of fast computing, physics ML, and massive computer systems can provide us with a million times jump and a shot. So, what do you think of supercomputers rapidly approaching a point in which they'll be able to completely simulate the Earth? What about the future in which the whole Earth including its lifeforms on it could be simulated and even further in the future? What if the whole universe could be simulated from its inception? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.